In today's latest Tesla updates, we're talking about the supercharger network, new factory locations, and of course, the recent price rises to all of the Tesla models. Welcome to Supercharge This. I'm Simon Knapp. We're going to talk about the latest news right now. If you do like this video, please consider subscribing and a like and a comment would be great as well. Let's begin with some good news. Uh, Tesla has now deployed their 35th thousandth supercharger to the network. And as Tesla is rapidly expanding the supercharger offerings around the globe, this milestone was reached in Wuhan, China. No, 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 not touching that. Moving on. Tesla is on a roll right now. They've deployed 5,000 superchargers over the last six months and feel they have capacity now to allow non-Tesla vehicles outside of the US to use the network in order to generate even more profit. Five new countries have been added to the mixed brand use program. Users in Denmark, Finland, Germany, Luxembourg, and Switzerland, all of whom have CCS charging sockets as default, can now take part in the best EV fast charging network in the world. Now, some people are concerned that allowing non-Tesla users to use the network may cause capacity issues and could increase wait times at busier stations. However, the flip side is that these 250 kilowatt money printing machines will pay for their own scaling. We can see the 50,000th unit come online by mid or summer 2023, and Tesla's goal is to actually triple the size of the existing network within the next two years. So once again, Tesla has raised prices across the product lineup, and understandably, people are not happy about it. Tesla isn't shy about raising their prices frequently, and there's no sign of that stopping anytime soon. The recent changes add between three and $6,000 to the base models, moving them further into the luxury car territory. As it stands, those prices may have changed since I recorded this. A fully spec'd out Model Y long range will now set you back $86,000 plus the arbitrary $1,200 delivery fee, which interestingly, despite the surge in diesel prices, hasn't changed yet. So let's break down these recent increases. The Model 3 long range increased by $2,000, its starting price now 58 k A Model Y long range rose $3,000 to 66 k whilst the performance climbed $2,000 to 70 k that now creates room in the lineup for the standard range all-wheel drive that we've seen the 4680 cells in coming out of Tesla, uh, coming out of Giga Austin. Previously, the $59,990 price tag for that standard range model didn't really seem to fit with the current pricing. But rather than adjust the lowest price down, they have, of course, increased the other prices to take into account the crazy changes in the global markets. With those prices in mind, it's kind of bonkers to think that back in 2020, the flagship Model S was available for $69,420. Neither the Model S or X were exempt from the latest increases. The S will now set you back an additional $5,000, coming in at 105 k uh, But the worst affected is the Model X with its $6,000 increase. Buying a Model X long range today will cost you the same as buying three rear wheel drive Model 3s, which is a whopping $120,000. So between a crazy supply demand situation and the rising cost of everything due to both the supply chain and inflation, Tesla are shielding themselves from exposure with the recent increases. Try and buy a long range Model Y today and you probably won't receive that for around 13 months. And who knows where the markets will be this time next year. I can see the Model Y actually topping out at around a 10 or short of 70 grand before we see signs that prices could start declining. Now it is very frustrating for consumers, but with the uncertainty that's found in the markets, we are gonna see this from most, if not all manufacturers over the coming months. With the exception of the Chevy Bolt, of course, which has recently dropped $2,000 due to lack lackluster sales and virtually no demand. If Tesla is drifting out of affordability for you, which it is for us, there are a number of good vehicles to look at. Personally, I'm going to go check out a Hyundai or Hyundai, Hyundai, however it's said here in the US, a Hyundai Ioniq 5. Uh, that's about 20 grand cheaper than a Model Y and still offers around 300, I think it's 303 miles in range definitely worth looking at as these prices are not gonna come down anytime soon. Next up, let's talk batteries. The future of Tesla is gonna be determined by the success or failure of the new 4680 battery cells that are currently fitted to the Model Y's made in Giga Austin in the standard range version. But with the new structural packs, this slow ramp up has shipped most of its vehicles to employees with only a very low number, around a handful, actually being shipped to customers. The 4680 cell is a new technology and manufacturing process for Tesla, so it does make sense to keep these vehicles close to home to allow QA and testing of this new assembly style. In its current state, the 4680 cells don't even appear to offer much of a mind-blowing change. The 4680 Model Ys are being shipped as the standard range variant. In short, that's a smaller battery pack that requires fewer cells and thus has a smaller range, around 279 miles versus the 318 or 330, roughly, for the Model Y long range. The long-term goal and benefits of the 4680s really comes down to the cost to produce and improvements in the energy efficiency. But right now, production ramp-up is a definite bottleneck with the 
with the majority of sales actually coming from Fremont and being shipped to Austin and now Berlin. Giga Berlin began producing vehicles using the 2170 cells that started their service in the first Model 3s. Uh, however, reports of 4680 testing on a secondary production line are kind of exciting. According to reports, Tesla produced a set of non-functional dummy vehicles along with dummy 4680 cells to explore any obvious production issues that could occur. As Giga Berlin is yet to be equipped with a Gigapress, the four and a half castings were actually shipped across the pond from Austin. Thankfully, rumblings suggest that the test was a success, but that doesn't mean we should expect a production line switchover to happen overnight. A number of other companies, including Panasonic and LG, are expected to ramp production of the 4680 cells for all of the Gigafactories by the end of next year. And it is rumored that Giga Berlin will shut down towards the end of this year to allow the lines to be switched over, but that is of course gonna be dependent on how the 4680 production is actually ramping in other factories. Speaking of cost control, one area that Tesla seems to be incredibly cost aware is its insurance product. Having recently added Nevada to the supported list of states, Tesla shows that its data-based insurance product is a good deal for users. Except if you're in California, which doesn't allow rates to be based on your driving style, which seems kind of absurd when you think about it. Is there a better way to inspire safe driving than to know that your premiums will be less each month? Tesla Insurance generally sets your rate based on your ongoing and constantly updated safety score, so it really does reward you for driving safely. That said, Tesla only started measuring the safety score when they began offering uh, the insurance product in Texas towards the end of 2021 by assessing just how good each driver is, and by knowing the cost of repairs down to the decimal places, Tesla are able to offer a savings of between 20 and 40% for users it's defined as average. Now, of course, you should be getting insurance quotes from multiple sources to make sure that Tesla is the best option for you. It still makes me mad how expensive car insurance is here in the US. It really is around four times more than I paid in the UK and it boggles my mind how expensive it is. And lastly today, there's been talk of Tesla looking for a location for its next North American Gigafactory. Everywhere, including Canada, Mexico, and the US are possibilities as Elon's looking for the best deal out there. But whilst the North American market will need another factory in the next five to 10 years at the very most, Southeast Asia will need one far sooner. Currently, Australia and New Zealand have wild delivery times. The waiting lists continue to grow and demand is eclipsing supply many times over. Enter the Indonesian president and his proposed farm to table style idea. President Widodo has spoken publicly about the discussions with the Tesla team stating, we had a lot of discussions, particularly on how Tesla can build their industry from the upstream to downstream, end to end, starting from smelter, then building the cathode and precursor industry, build EV batteries, build lithium batteries, and then the vehicle factory. Everything in Indonesia, because that's very efficient. That's what I offered. And this seemed like a perfect opportunity for Musk to build more production in Asia whilst not having all the eggs in a Chinese basket. Especially as Elon has previously suggested Tesla could begin its own mining operations for both lithium and nickel, both of which are abundant in Indonesia. The government has also proposed construction of a new gigafactory that could produce half a million vehicles per year, whilst being powered by renewable energy sources, which we know Tesla are fans of. Kind of get the feeling this is the deal that India wanted, but by effectively financially blocking Tesla from the country, it's going to make that negotiation somewhat tougher. But cost control is going to be essential going forward, especially if you look at where the Tesla stock price is right now, down from around $1,100 all the way down to $650 per share. The valuation of the company has really taken a hit. That has happened with a large swath of the market, but specifically for Tesla, they've lost a lot of value. Was it a bubble that just burst or is it something that's been devalued because of external factors or just speculation against Elon Musk as the CEO? Time's gonna tell, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Right now, it is hard to see that that stock price recovering to $1,000 anytime soon, unless there's a big turnaround in the market. That's it for this supercharged update. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. A like and a comment would be great as well, and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, Jenga.